Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cisco Chat Live. My name is Grant Shirk, and I am joining you from the Cisco Solutions, Customer Solutions Marketing Team, and really excited to host this next conversation about how you can really power more secure, more unified experiences with the power of Cisco Networking and the Cisco Networking Cloud. This is a live interactive discussion. So however you're joining us, be it on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, social media platform of your choice, please, we are looking forward to your questions. And we have a team of people both behind the scenes and live on camera who are gonna help us dig into some of the core announcements from this year's Cisco Live in Las Vegas, how we built and developed those products and how other customers like you are already starting to power new experiences through this platform. To get us started, I wanna introduce you to three very exciting speakers who will be joining us today from across the portfolio. Uh, first up, we have Angelique Medina, who is the Head of Internet Intelligence and Product Marketing for Cisco Thousand Eyes. Angelique, how's it going today? I'm great. It's really nice to be here. Fantastic. We'll make sure we send some good questions your way. Uh, alongside Angelique, we also have Mary Piontowski, who is our Vice President and Head of Product Design uh, across the Cisco networking platforms. Mary, how's life in your part of the world? It's awesome. Thanks, Grant. Good to be here. Absolutely. And then certainly last but not least, uh, our third guest today is Yusuf Khan, who's our Vice President of Technical Marketing for Data Center Networking. Yusuf, uh, where are we finding you today? Oh, Yusuf, I think the television studio is is, is working against you today. How's that microphone working now? <laughs> no, like, thank you very much. Um, I'm feeling great and thanks for having me here. Okay, awesome. Well, you know, it wouldn't be a, we wouldn't be living that hybrid work life if we didn't get to come off mute from time to time. But I think that's the power of this platform is we can continue the conversation from Cisco Live and really dig into how these announcements and how these investments are coming together. But it has been a couple of weeks, uh, and I know that I've I've forgotten some of the customer interactions that I've had. So before we dive into the conversation, I would love to take a quick look at some of the action from the show floor and from the keynote. We've got a, a video recap I'd love to roll. Hi, my name is Elle Grossenbacher, Product Marketing Lead for Cisco Wireless. I'm here at Cisco Live, and it has been incredible energy all day long. I'm here in the Cisco Networking Cloud booth where I've been talking to customers all day long about how they can build predictable, simple, outcome-driven solutions for their users. Now let's take a listen to the Cisco Networking announcement that'll talk through how customers can get started on that journey. Cisco is leading the campaign against complexity with radical simplification. We are simplifying IT everywhere and at every single scale. We know that we have been building products and technologies in silos, and that's what the market and all of you used to want and used to need. But we also know that this is no longer what you want nor what you need. And we are on a journey towards platform consolidation. Don't be afraid. Now, whether you use on-premise management software, operating models, or one based in the cloud, Platform consolidation will make it easier for you to use Cisco products and our solutions. So over time, this will translate into more unified experiences for your customers and your users. Until now, there has never been a consistent way to go through and automate your network operations, to analyze and diagnose those issues, and to assure the user experience in one place. And that is driving the vision for the Cisco Networking Cloud. Now, I know what you're thinking. Cisco Networking Cloud, what is it? It is an integrated platform for both on-premise and cloud-based operating models. It will help you provide these unified experiences and manage your Cisco networking products in one place. With Cisco Networking Cloud, the swivel chair operations of the past will give way to simplified management. Awesome. Well, that is at the, the heart of the conversation we want to have today. Of course, if you do want to watch the entire keynote from Chuck's Big Open, 
all the way through the conversation about AI and how we're using it across the platform, we're going to post the Cisco Live keynote link on YouTube, which is great. You could watch it two or three times. I might have done that along the way. But there were some big ideas in there that Jonathan Davidson was, was talking about. Everything from simplifying IT in the experience, breaking down silos across the different networking domain, and ultimately in the service of that greater outcome of delivering unified, simple, predictable, and secure experiences, no matter how our customers or employees touch the network. Uh, I know from my conversations on the floor, people were super excited about the potential, both for the vision as, as well as what we're delivering today. So let's jump off from there into this first question. And then Angelique, I'm going to turn to you first. I know you had the opportunity to talk to a ton of customers in Las Vegas about uh, both how they're thinking about internet intelligence overall, but like managing across the network. What was the most interesting or exciting interaction that you recall from your time at the show? Well, it's really difficult to choose just one, but I have to say that being on the show floor at the Thousand Eyes booth and watching our customers and other attendees come by and see on the screens the Thousand Eyes visuals, you know, being able to see their traffic as it moves across the internet to all of their external services and applications and really just seeing like the light bulb go off for them where they really had no idea that they could see external networks like they belong to them. So that was really exciting because, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. And so seeing that visualization was just um, really powerful for them. Uh, that and also the amazing t-shirts that uh, we were giving out that folks were just lining around on the show floor for, uh, that's always a fun thing to, to see at the show every year. It is all, all about the t-shirts. It's a bit of an internal competition that can you come up with the pithiest and the, and the most interesting. Um, awesome. Thank you. And now, Mary, turning to you, I know over and over again, we've heard this theme of simplification, reducing that swivel chair environment. You have a unique position as the leader of the design team across all of this. Like, What kind of conversations did you wind up in at the show? It, yeah, it was it was amazing. Lots of customer conversations. We had several team members conducting research. Um, you know, just a lot of conversations on the floor in the whisper suites, and it's it's really like a candy store, I think, for um, user experience leaders uh, at Cisco Live. One of my favorite conversations was hearing from one of our healthcare customers who have a range of Cisco networking products to power their hospital. Um, they're also building a hospital of the future with state-of-the-art technology. And what was so inspiring to hear from these individual people who are the ones planning and implementing the changes to the hospital network, um, they're taking lives into their own hands every day. And like we talk about this internally, but to actually hear from those individuals and, and the stress that it puts on them, um, whether it's replacing access points or running firmware upgrades or, you know, troubleshooting an issue, um, lives are at stake. So, like, for me, this conversation really shed light on how critical it is for us to radically simplify, like Jonathan just said, our powerful technology for customers to both reduce that margin of error, but also to just free up time for them to do more important work like innovation. I love that that mission driven thought. Like, how do we bring technology and design together to solve real problems? And, and speaking of innovation, you know, Yusuf, I feel like a lot of what you and your team were talking about at Cisco Live is at the core of how Cisco is thinking about things like AI and, and truly advanced data center networking. What what were customers getting excited about when 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 you walked into the room? Oh, thank you, Grant, for the questions. I mean, today, basically, everyone is excited about AI and ML applications, and they are excited because it opens up a new set of possibilities to many of our customers, and many new use cases are coming to light. I mean, you name it, customers were talking about advanced medical research, computer-aided drug discovery, natural language processing, self-driving vehicles, faster and better customer service for a lot of our enterprise customers, and this went on and on and on. And especially now that the GPU accelerated servers are widely available, and they allow our customers the flexibility to design as well as train the deep neural networks. Uh, their AI developers are churning out new AI applications, basically, which takes advantage of and demand low latency as well as uh, lossless network. 
Now the, there is a lot of demand on the network admins to make sure that the underlying infrastructure is compliant to those requirements. So they have to deploy the right hardware, the right software capabilities, as well as the configurations that can support these AI and workloads, right? So what we did is at Cisco Live um, uh, Las Vegas is that we launched a new AI blueprint for networking uh, to highlight the fact that our Nexus portfolio has the hardware and software capabilities available today in the shipping uh, platform to provide the right latency, congestion management mechanism, as well as the telemetry to meet these AI and ML workload requirements. So we also offered a powerful tool such as Nexus Dashboard Insights for visibility and Nexus Dashboard uh, Fabric Controller for configuration automation. And you couple them together, that makes Nexus 9000 a very, very powerful tool for building high performance AI and ML networking fabric for our customers. And the blueprint is basically a fast pass way for the customers to unlock these new capabilities and values for their businesses. Because in the end, what we believe it is about delivering high performance with a simplified operational experience in an economical fashion. And that's what customer wants from us. So using Nexus network for AI and ML workloads will allow our customers to use the same infrastructure for their backend as well as the front end networks. And that simplifies things tremendously because now they have the same tool set for operations. They can have a consistent operational experience. They can have a consistent security posture coupled with common sparing, and that's gonna deliver them tons of cost reduction as well as simplification and, and the unification of the experience that the customers are looking for. So that okay. was yeah. exciting. Oh, that's that's super awesome. When you think about like the, the bottlenecks that hold back innovation and the ability to just uncork that capacity that's already in your network and deliver these apps now, super, super powerful. So Absolutely. let's dig a little bit into some of those announcements now. We've talked about the customer conversations and what people got excited about. Mary, I'm gonna turn back to you. Jonathan spoke in his keynote about this unified platform experience and this this idea, this grand vision for the networking cloud. Can you remind us a little bit about some of the, the details about how we are simplifying that experience for customers and, and like, what does it entail? Yeah, yeah. So as Jonathan said, um, it's, it's, it's really about this unified platform experience across cloud, on-prem, um, bringing things together for streamlined management. So imagine instead of going to, you know, five or 10 or however many places to do your work um, with your Cisco networking and security products, imagine just logging in once and navigating more seamlessly, um, you know, throughout the Cisco networking environment to get your work done um, from campus to branch, data center, compute, IoT, SD-WAN, um, and on and on, uh, really less less swivel chair and hot potato to get your work done. Um, so digging in a little bit deeper, last year, some of you may remember that we announced a unified design system across Cisco networking and security. And this is really a part of this vision. Um, this means that our applications, many of you are seeing it now, are starting to look and feel more like one suite of products. Um, whether you're, you're troubleshooting in the cloud or on-prem, things are going to feel more familiar. This year, as a part of the Cisco networking cloud, there are kind of three um, specific things that we called out. One is that we're making it easier for customers to, to log into our products through single sign-in. You log in once and you're in to all of your Cisco products. Um, the second one is we're making it easier for customers to use our a APIs um, through API key exchange. So less copying and pasting of those API keys. And um, the third one is consistent um, navigation in product navigation that will allow you to switch between the different um, between your different platforms. If you're in Meraki and you're using DNAC or vManage or, or Intersight, you have ways to just kind of easily flow. Um, and this is really just the beginning. There's met much more that we're doing, including looking at terminology across the board, standardizing terms, workflows such as identity management, um, onboarding, troubleshooting, topology frameworks. And why is this important? Because customers are asking for it. Um, folks listening, hopefully this is resonating with you. We hear this all the time from customers. They want us to make things simpler easier to manage these sophisticated um, networks. We hear that skill sets are shifting, um, budgets are decreasing, um, and really our customers wanna 
want things to be simpler to reduce the margin of error. So at the end of the day, um, we owe this to our customers to really, really help help the Cisco um, networking cloud is is really in response to to these things that we've been hearing. That's awesome. And I, I love that attention to detail and thinking through like, what are all of the individual places where we may have introduced friction in the past, or we see an opportunity to help solve a complex problem in a more simple and sophisticated way like that adds up that compounds very, very quickly. Now, speaking of highly sophisticated and powerful network experiences, you know, Angelique, I know there were some things that were happening in the Thousand Eyes world around network assurance and insights. Can you, how does that connect to this broader vision and what our customers need from your point of view? Yeah, absolutely. So network assurance is a really key part of the cloud networking vision because that's all about simplicity. It's all about, uh, as Mary and others have said, unifying experience. And one of the things that our customers are dealing with is that they don't live um, in a in a in a bordered world, right? Like all their users are, um, many of them are hybrid. They're connecting to applications that are outside of IT's control. Um, you know, the, the internet is really now um, operating as kind of the enterprise network, the new enterprise network. So um, there's a lot of things that um, our customers have to deal with. And the way that Thousand Eyes approaches this is making it really easy to see across all of these domains, um, you know, in, in one view, and be able to kind of seamlessly see and manage and improve the experience of their customers. So to that end, at, at Cisco Live, it was really exciting as we announced um, innovations and integrations to make it really easy for Cisco customers to take advantage of this visibility. So, you know, from uh, this uh, Cisco Meraki MX devices, as well as the Room, uh, web, or Cisco WebEx Room OS devices, you can get uh, very granular network visibility to, again, your, your cloud workloads, your SaaS applications, some even internal applications, anything that really matters to you. And this is it's important because in particular with the Cisco Meraki MX devices, um, they are designed to sit in very lean IT environments. So, you know, you're talking about retail stores, uh, you know, grocery stores, convenience stores, uh, banking uh, branches, and there's not a lot of hardware that you can just leverage to be able to deploy Thousand Eyes or other applications. And so, you know, being able to use uh, those devices and, um, you know, seamlessly roll out Thousand Eyes Vantage Points um, has, has really been um, a game changer for a lot of our customers. Uh, so you can, you know, with just a few clicks, roll this out through uh, Meraki MX. You can set up test uh, to uh, app common applications that you have right in the Meraki dashboard. Um, and you can do the same thing with the uh, uh, Cisco WebEx Room OS devices as well. So it just makes it really easy for our customers to have these seamless experiences across the different platforms. Um, and the second thing that, that we really focused on was how do we make it really easy for our, our customers to cut through all of the noise um, and really understand the meaningful incidents that they need to pay attention to, because there's just so much that they're dealing with. Right, and so we announced event detection, which basically does all of the correlation across their tests um, that our customers are running. It does causal analysis, it tells you exactly what the problem is, who's responsible, what users are impacted, what applications are impacted. So it's a it's a really key part of our overall approach, which is making it really easy for our customers to again manage a lot of these environments that are outside of their control. Okay, uh, that's fantastic. And, you know, to kind of bridge that a little bit, when you talk about these low touch IT environments, right? you might have a lot of capacity, a lot of her, but those are incredibly high touch, high impact interactions that you're fueling. Because you talked about you know, financial services, retail, right? Every transaction across the network, every opportunity to have a great experience for the customer, for the investor. Critically, you need to know when that's working, but the same goes for you know this environment that we're working in. If I'm not having a great conversation with you, with Yusuf, and it breaks down, I, that, that slows down business. And again, I Absolutely. think that that yeah. visibility and intelligence, that just that data and telemetry is super powerful. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Yusuf, I'm going to turn back to you for the third part of this. And you, 
uh, really covered, I think, the the net of this AIML blueprint and the power of the uh, Nexus Data Center Switch family for our customers. But what I'd love to dig into a little bit deeper, we talk about the data center network and these AIML applications. And so often that conversation flows around the actual app itself or the, the, you know, the chip that it's running on. But what's the role that the network plays for our customers when it comes to delivering these AI and ML-powered experiences? Absolutely. That's a very good question. I think uh, you're absolutely right because for most of the people, when they talk about AI and ML applications, it's all about the software stack that runs on top of uh, some sort of a silicon, and the conversation is centered around there. But uh, network plays, as usual, is the most important part because it stitches all the endpoints together into one fabric. And uh, there are certain requirements that the AI ML workload imposes on the network. And as I um, uh, briefly touched upon in the previous uh, answer is that two things. One is uh, low latency, and the second one is this more important one is the lossless network. So the underlying network has to be absolutely lossless. But in order to operate the network, there are a couple of additional components that are required, and one of those is visibility, and the second one is automation. Because without the visibility, you don't know what is happening in your network, whether you are having congestion or not. If you are having congestion, how are you going to go tune some of the network parameters so that you can reduce the congestion or uh, remove the congestion? And automation is an important and crucial part of it because without that, you go back to the the manual task of configuring your network. And as you are adding more more nodes to your cluster, I mean, you have to go back to the network and configure those endpoints manually, which is not feasible in this dynamic environment. So automation is often overlooked, but much needed part of that solution. So obviously lossless network is number one, visibility is number two, and number three is the automation. And that's where we talked about an infrastructure as automation quite a bit um, uh, as part of the AI blueprint that we published, right? So what we did is that on top of the AI blueprint for networking that we published, we published a Cisco validated design that how to deploy that networking blueprint also. And as part of that Cisco validated design, we had a component which is called infrastructure as code, where we basically utilized the partnership that we have with the open automation platforms such as Red Hat Ansible. And then we came up with a Red Hat Ansible playbook that can help our customers automate the configuration of this environment. So customers can write the code, deploy it, and then make it part of their CI CD pipeline. So this whole cycle is automated. And, and that is, I believe, one of the most important components. Uh, and I mean, when we were having an offline conversation with you also, we touched upon briefly, uh, but as you asked, like, I mean, what is the role of the network? I mean, let me summarize. The role of the network is to provide a lossless network. The role of the network is to provide visibility what is going on inside the network. And the role of the network is to be able to help our DevOps team automate the complete life cycle of the network. Okay. That's awesome. And I mean, there's, there's so much in that. And that's one thing I got particularly excited about when it came to this blueprint. So we're going to post the link to the AIML blueprint in the design guide here in the chat. So you all can grab it and see how we're simplifying uh, the delivery of that and how to help you actually start implementing these practices in your own networks. But speaking of elevating the overall power of the network, Angelique, I wanted to go even one click deeper into this because I know this is something near and dear into your heart. How you, know, you mentioned the connection to Room OS and the Meraki MX devices, but how how do we actually go about doing that? How does that, how do we get that visibility across the internet from these, these devices and these agents? Yeah, absolutely. So we get that through um, the vantage points that we're enabling our customers to now deploy on these devices. And these vantage points are something that Thousand Eyes has deployed all over the globe. So they're across the internet, they're in public cloud networks, they're, um, they can be uh, deployed within our customer environments, uh, whether they're on uh, Meraki, uh, MX, or they're on uh, Cisco, or even uh, Catalyst, uh, switching series and other Cisco uh, devices as well. And um, and also on uh, your hybrid workforce devices. So you know on laptops. You know a lot of folks are working remotely. 
they're using their um, you know, consumer broadband networks to connect to services. So we really make it um, easy to get visibility from all of these different locations and support different users and uh, different use cases. And what we enable our customers to do is to then you know, look at all of the network paths to the services and applications that are really critical to them. So this could be, you know, productivity applications. It could be um, internal apps. It could be, uh, you know, things that are deployed in your cloud environments. And it really provides this kind of hop by hop granular visibility. Um, and the really interesting thing about what we're able to do with all of this, in addition to giving our customers this visibility into what's important to them, is we also have this notion of collective intelligence, where we're taking visibility from across the globe, we're uh, rolling all of this up into, you know, effectively a weather map of the internet. You know, so you can go to Thousand Eyes uh, website today, uh, and you can actually see um, what's going on in terms of networks and applications, and understand, you know, what what may be having issues. So it's really powerful that we're able to provide this macro view of. Uh, the internet and these services, because that's really what's powering a lot of the IT today. So, um, you know, very granular view, but also that big picture view. And it's great to be able to navigate back and forth. And you mentioned these services. There were also some things that you were doing with AWS and their cloud network as well. Like, are we are we opening up that black box a little bit? Absolutely. So, you know, we've we've already been providing our customers visibility into cloud environments uh, for many, many years. You know, that's really important for our customers as they start to migrate workloads to the cloud, or they might have a hybrid cloud uh, deployment. Um, but what we announced at Cisco Live is particularly interesting because we partnered with AWS to provide even more granular visibility into their network. So, you know, obviously they know their network more than anyone else. There's a lot of uh, uh, proprietary information that they have, you know, in terms of how their network is architected. And, you know, so, you know, we, we needed to work with them to ensure that we could enrich our path visualization. So, you know, what you see today, uh, you know, from your sites into AWS, you're going to be able to see uh, for example, the global accelerator nodes, you're going to be able to understand how the performance you're seeing is, you know, maybe different from what uh, you're supposed to be getting, you know, what AWS is telling you you're supposed to be getting and, you know, where all of these nodes are located and what services they're supporting. And the reason why that's important is because, you know, AWS has a lot of customers, right? And it can often be difficult for um, them to support uh, concerns from their customers when their customers aren't able to give them a lot of information. So they might just say, hey, you know, I'm having issues. I don't know if it's the internet. I don't know if it's you. Um, I can't really pinpoint precisely where the problem is and I can't give you a lot of information. And so that makes it really difficult to collaborate. So, you know, I think AWS really understands the power of this visibility and they want to empower their customers to work more effectively with them. And so that's what this is really all about. You know, how do you give um, better information to those that are supporting you so you can just get much faster responses, resolution, um, and that's really important as the cloud takes on, you know, an even more important role for a lot of our customers. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that they're both, well, supportive and encouraging of that conversation. You know, you say, like, bring bring data to any conversation to support what you're talking about, and, like, the more the better in this, yeah. in this situation. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Mary, one uh, great seeing your cat joining us here in the background. One of, one of the joys of, of hybrid work. They're, they're walking around. Uh, but another, like, we've so we've talked about this idea of visibility and sophistication, but a word that we are always hearing Jonathan talk about is simplicity. And I kind of get the sense that simple is not so simple necessarily, or like simple is one of those things that's easy to claim, but really hard to deliver on. So when you and your team think about simplicity, uh, like, what does that really mean to you? And how do you think about making simplicity real for customers? Well, I'll add that simplicity can be a scary four letter word to some people because, you know, it, it, some some folks will feel will wonder. Does that mean you're going to take functionality away? Are you going to dumb things down? You know, we we still want this powerful technology. Um, it's not that. Um, so, I mean, I would answer uh, 
with three things because there's there's always got to be three. Um, the first, I, the first, and I think the most important thing here is that we need to take a user centered, use case driven approach to how we're doing product development. We need to listen to our customers and then translate what we're hearing in in what matters most, those moments that matter into um, our roadmaps and what we're choosing to do. And, and it can be tempting to add a lot of features, but we need to kind of pause and really make sure that the features that we're adding are mapping to those use cases. Um, we, have, we have a range of customer types with varying needs. So this is not simple. It's not simple to create simple experiences for um, on-prem customers, cloud customers, hybrid customers, from data center to campus to branch. Um, for those using the, the GUI versus those using um, the APIs or a combination of all of the above. Um, so needs are really going to vary and we need to listen. We need to provide integrations in the right places like the ones that Angelique um, spoke about. And I just want to do a big shout out to Meraki and Thousand Eyes. I saw a lot of those light bulbs that Angelique referred to when, when um, demoing that work. And um, you know, also identifying opportunities for automation, like the ones that Yusuf spoke about. So all of these things are about taking a user-centered approach. The second one is um, really this idea of consistency and unification. It comes into play. It's simpler when the interface feels similar from product to product. You don't have to learn things over and over again. Customers want us to make technology predictable Everything from the buying motion to the licensing model, um, and that's that's hard work, um, but very important work. Consistency and working with APIs across the board, um, and so on. Visibility across the network. Um, bringing more consistency and unification here is really critical, and this is um, this will make it feel more simple. And then the third one is um, I have to do a plug for world class product design. Um, it would be a miss if the design leader um, didn't call this out, um, but it's really important to have um, a talented, experienced uh, team of enterprise uh, product designers to really help make these things possible. Um, so, you know, how might we help our customers get their work done with the least amount of work possible? By doing this, we reduce the risk that customers are going to make an ant unanticipated mistake, like I mentioned earlier. Um, we, we really owe it to our customers to, to bring this simplicity. They are asking for it, and it does not mean taking important things away. So we, we, we give and we give and we give, and it's, it's fantastic. No, I think that's what's been most inspiring to me uh, in my, my journey at Cisco is, and you mentioned a couple of these things, that idea of that customer-centric and design-driven thinking, it's not just... The experience, right? It's not just the management. It is truly how we think about product development, how we think about the customer experience life cycle through all of it, and really driving that ethos around simplifying complexity, driving consistency. And I think you said the big P word, which was predictability. I think knowing what you're going to get, knowing what the the expected response is to a given input is incredibly powerful. And I, I'm glad you're here because I think that's something that we don't talk about enough as a company, but it runs through everything you're hearing from Angelique to Yusuf to all of the other product teams that we talk about at Cisco Live. Um, that is super cool. Um, I can get on it, I can't help it. All right, uh, Yusuf, last last kind of big question for you, and then I'm gonna flip our conversation back to customers overall. Um, but you mentioned this at the top, this idea of infrastructure as code automation and particularly is it an area of focus and innovation for your team uh, how do you tie these two together this ai ml drive as well as infrastructure as a code for our customers uh, thank you for the question grant i mean infrastructure as a code is basically an integral part of our portfolio development strategy and we started right from the very beginning because when we are defining our uh, the infrastructure we want to make sure that it is front-ended by an open, robust, and a programmable REST API that should be able to expose all the capabilities of the underlying infrastructure, and that is stable stakes for us. Uh, on the other hand, our customers are also you know, basically adopting 
DevOps model so that they can deploy the applications at a much faster rate and operate efficiencies in the data center environment. Uh, and not only that, we have been like providing these out of box automation tools such as Nexus Dashboard Insights I talked about, such as Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller, whether it comes to uh, visibility use case or configuration automation use case, we have been very, very diligent about supporting this open automation platforms. And I gave one example such as Red Hat Ansible, but there are many others that we, we work with. So we have been curating an open partner ecosystem of these automation platforms and contributing to it. So there's a big part of Cisco that not only develops, writes these uh, uh, automation uh, routines, but also contribute to the open source through GitHub and all that uh, work is available through the DevNet platform that Cisco has. Uh, similarly, I mean, when it comes to AI and ML blueprint, we wanted to make sure not only that we can give the design best practices to the customer, but we give them in a fashion which is consistent to what we have been testing in the lab, but also give them an Ansible playbook that they can take it and they can deploy it in their environment that can configure the network in a matter of minutes. And that is very, very important for us because we wanted to make sure that this automation framework can help them not only configure them, but configure them based on our design best practices. And that includes configuration for uh, quality of service, uh, for priority flow control, managing end-to-end -end congestion, and then also help them manipulate different counters within the environment so that they can get a complete experience, best practices on the design, automation of the configuration. And we wrote this Ansible playbook in such a way that it can be easily uh, customizable for customer environment. For example, we created a fabric with X number of leaves and Y number of spines and customer can modify it to fit their requirement um, as well. Because what we believe that as these AI and ML clusters uh, become more mainstream in adoption and grow in scale, automation is going to be a very, very critical technology in ensuring that the networks are up to the challenge of supporting these AI and ML workloads. And that was very, very important for us, right? Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to give the three of you a quick chance to catch your breath. Uh, I am starting to see questions come in, and I see a few of them getting answered directly. Uh, but this is, again, your opportunity to ask some direct questions of this team. If you want to talk about design, we want to talk about in internet intelligence and visibility across your estate, or you know, go deep on some AI, ML, and un unblocking those bottlenecks, please get those in. We will sort and filter them and probably answer a couple of them live uh, on stage right here. Um, but for the last piece of our conversation, I'm going to come to each of you in turn. I might mess with the order a little bit that we agreed upon, so be, beware. Um, but I do want to now say, how are we making this real? Uh, and I think Yusuf, I actually would like to talk to you because you, you've got the floor a little bit. We, we acknowledge the representative from Data Center Networking. Uh, and uh, from that these, these two big ideas, this idea of infrastructure as code and, uh, you know, customers unblocking the potential of those AIML applications across their networks. Is there a, a customer that comes to mind or a scenario where someone's deploying this in reality and getting benefit from it already? No, absolutely. Like, I mean, in general, right? I mean, in terms of AI and ML, I mean, truthfully speaking, many enterprise customers are still in the evaluation phase. They are trying to figure out how to leverage this technology in their business. Uh, there are many companies kicking tires on things like neural networks, large language models, machine learning. Uh, but I mean, I would like to talk about one customer win that we had, which is basically at a quantitative financial firm based out of Europe. And what sets this company apart is that they are a next generation quantitative financial research and services firm, which already uses a lot, lot of many advanced technologies such as machine learning and big data to help their in-house financial experts tackle some of the most important financial challenges and track the capital movement in the financial markets. They store and process a huge amount of data on every day. And then uh, they want to mine insights that can give them and their customers an edge in the market. So from an infrastructure point of view, the firm deploys many thousands of servers in their data center. Uh, and from a networking point of view, we have been working with them very closely to help deploy the high performance, non-blocking network to support their demanding requirements. 
Uh, what they have told us that uh, what set, us, set uh, Cisco as a networking vendor apart is our ASIC technology, which has been a key differentiator in terms of performance, latency, and the flow management, but also the automation framework that we provide. We are working with them to help them modernize their automation stack uh, using NXOS and Nexus dashboard fabric controller with infrastructure as a code. I mean, I mean that's a prime example of a customer which is adopting a complete automation framework. Uh, I mean, it's an exciting win for us, not only because of this win, but because we also view it as a template on how we can help other customers when their AI deployments scale to this size, right? Awesome. Um, that's great. Uh, there's a there's a lot to that use case. Um, Mary, how about you? Like, as you talk about the, not just the simplification, but eliminating that that swivel chair and those small steps in between, like, where are you seeing customers like really step into this new operating model? Well, I will say um, with a common look and feel, um, there's plenty of progress across our different platforms. So the customers who are using um, Nexus, Intersight, um, or security products like um, Secure Endpoint, um, vManage, DNAC, Cisco Spaces, and um, of course, Meraki, um, all of these platforms are starting to kind of adopt this common look and feel as far as the swivel chair goes. So all of the products are, um, our portfolio is all like working on integrating these at slightly different timelines. Um, so SSO, API key exchange, navigation switcher, um, you can expect to see these integrations soon. So, um, I can bring to life what, what it, um, what it will feel like. Um, so imagine a hybrid customer that may, may use Meraki for the cloud networking, um, maybe thousand eyes as well for WAN, WAN assurance, um, DNAC for on-prem management, maybe ice umbrella for additional security. Um, the customers will log in once and that's it. They have access to everything and then they'll have consistent navigation in those products to navigate, navigate um, between them. So some of our products right now, I'm looking at a roadmap here. We've got Meraki, the IoT operations dashboard, um, Cisco Spaces, Intersight. Several of them are um, have rolled them out or will be rolling out these features soon. That's all. I love a live view into the roadmap. <laughs> I, know, I, I, think, I, I think what's powerful is like how many of these different domains and opportunities are are, are converging in this area. And you know, to kind of geek out on design, like there's kind of a funny terminology question around this. Like I know we saw the demo of that platform navigator, but like those 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 boxes, like there's a food related thing here. Like there, there's a difference between a waffle menu and a hamburger menu. Like how do I know if I'm getting breakfast or lunch? But I look at a, a UI element. Well, just wait. Next next year we're gonna roll out the hot dog menu. The ultimate in simplification. I love it. That we can debate is a hot dog a sandwich, which I'm sure many people here have had that conversation. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. And then Angelique, coming back to you, we talked broadly about some of these industry use cases and when those high impact, high touch, but low tech environments can really, really matter. Do you have a, a great customer example or story of thousand eyes across these different domains really having an impact? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen this again and again, and I think in the case of Meraki, we're just excited what that's going to do for our customers who, you know, they're, they, uh, these are designed to go into brick and mortar sites, but I think what the reality is that, you know, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, your uh, retailer, um, you know, folks today really expect seamless experiences from what they're looking at online to what they see in the store. I mean, there's a lot of places where you can, you know, purchase something online and you can go pick it up. And that is um, what's enabling a lot of uh, folks to be competitive, you know, to offer these really amazing kind of, uh, uh, like multi-domain experiences. Now, the, the problem though, is that there's a lot of complexity under the hood, you know, because you have to be able to connect to different um, systems on the back end to ensure that there's um, no issue when folks show up and they expect, um, you know, something to be available to them. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, 
it's ultimately really isn't even about technology. It's about experience because, you know, there's a lot of services and systems that are available to organizations around the globe. But at the end of the day, they need to be able with those uh, services and systems and networks and all that connectivity. They need to ensure that there's continuous delivery of optimal experiences to the customers um, because you know, there's a lot out there. Folks can, you know, go next door if they're not satisfied with how um, they're they're experiencing a service. Um, and also for your employees to ensure that they're productive no matter where they're sitting around the globe. So, you know, experience really is the, the key thing here. And it's it's really amazing that Thousand Eyes is able to provide such extensive visibility from, you know, again, these, these more distributed locations with the Meraki MX uh, uh, integration that we just announced, but even more broadly, whether you're moving to the cloud, whether you're adopting new SaaS services, whether you're um, looking to support your your remote or hybrid workforce, um, it, it's really important to have visibility so you can de-risk those initiatives and ensure again that you are delivering the outcomes that your organization expects from these new um, uh, kind of digital initiatives that you have. So um, again, really excited that this is just going to enable our customers to do more with what Thousand Eyes provides today. Okay, awesome. Thank you all. Uh, we're going to move and I've got a couple of live questions from the audience coming in. So I will popcorn those around where I see alignment to your areas of expertise. Uh, Angelique, for the first one, I am going to stick with you. Uh, so Andrew from LinkedIn had a question, a follow up on the AWS uh, integration. And the question is like, are there other cloud services you're also looking to partner up for this? Or is it going to be AWS specific? Yeah, that's a great question. So I know better than to talk about futures, but I, I think that, you know, we talked a lot about um, how our customers are dealing with a lot of complexity, um, working with a lot of different domains and integration for Thousand Eyes is, you know, it's really important to integrate across Cisco, you know, and have those seamless experiences, but it's also important to integrate more broadly. And so, you know, we've done things like, yes, partnering with AWS, also ensuring that we support open standards like open telemetry, so folks can leverage our data across a variety of tools and um, different services. So, you know, ultimately, what we're looking to do is provide the broadest set of integrations that are going to enable our customers to um, better work with the critical services they have. So don't want to get into specifics, but I will just say that um, absolutely we're looking to expand um, the partnerships that we have in public cloud and also SaaS and other services as well. Okay, excellent, thank you. Yusuf, the next one is for you. And it's a sim similar theme, it's kind of like, well, what else can we do? How can we go deeper into this? And this is about the AIML blueprint. Uh, one of our viewers asked, you know, you mentioned Red Hat Ansible. Uh, can I also run Terraform automations to support the AIML blueprint that you published? Uh, it's a very good question, and thanks for asking it. Right, the the short answer is absolutely yes. So what I mentioned is that we we really foster an ecosystem of open automation platforms, and Red Hat Ansible is one example. But uh, we have a very very close partnership with uh, uh, HashiCorp for their Terraform also. And we invest equal amount of time and resources from our team to write these Terraform providers as well as abstractions for Terraform uh, to enable our portfolio. So uh, Terraform is an absolute uh, uh, a possibility. And what we will be doing is that we will be following up uh, with some of the work that our team is doing in that regards also, but customers are absolutely welcome to take upon it themselves and write the Terraform uh, uh, plans for enabling the AI and ML networking fabric. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Let's see the next question on the list here. Ah, this is about event detection. So Angelique, I'm going to come back to you. Reading this, since event detection is meant to automate how out outages are detected, I think you were kind of talk touching on this earlier. Does this mean it's part of the WAN Insights product or is it something separate? Yeah, so it is something that's separate. So event detection is really designed to enable you to see what is happening in the moment, you know, in real time as issues emerge. And what's um, what 
is really amazing about WAN Insights, which we announced earlier this year at Cisco Live and MIA, is that it's designed to enable our customers to be proactive. So, you know, working with Cisco uh, Catalyst SD-WAN and the integration that we have with them where we're able to take in telemetry from the analytics and, you know, analyze it and do predictive um, uh, analysis on it, we are able to uh, suggest to our customers what policies they should have in place in order to um, uh, optimize application experience. And so that's really about how do you get ahead of issues? And, um, you know, so they, they really are uh, important to have both, you know, to uh, be able to predict, forecast, and avoid issues, but also when, you know, you're you're inevitably going to have things that are just unexpected or, or not predictable come up, um, event detection is really what's going to enable you to get quick visibility into that and know immediately where you need to go to solve the problem. Okay, awesome. All right, uh, looking at time here uh, and doing a little bit of magic with the questions. I think we have time for one more, but I'm going to bring a topic together. Uh, the, the overall topic is sustainability. Uh, what I think is kind of fun about this is we're starting to get questions from multiple sites uh, that have actually picked up on some of the other things we talked about at Cisco Live, but didn't plan in the content today. So one of them is this idea of the sustainable data center, and another one is around energy networking. So Yusuf, I'll start with you, and then Mary, if you want to think on this a little bit, I'm curious if we can connect this to the design system, potentially. But Yusuf, uh, it, we know we talked about sustainable data networks. Or, sorry, let me try that again. We It's hard to say. We talked about sustainable data center networking at Cisco Live. Uh, is there is there an, an overview of how that touches your team? Like, what does that really mean in the context of Cisco? Absolutely. Um, uh, as you know, that sustainability is a top of mind issue for virtually every enterprise customer that we have today, right? And uh, we, I mean, we have been talking about sustainability for the data center product and portfolio for quite some time. We talked about it at Cisco Live EMEA, uh, and then we also uh, made a, quite a few announcements at Cisco Live Las Vegas also. We announced our approach towards a sustainable data center networking that is now aided by new integrations for Cisco data center networking products and the Nexus dashboard. So what it will allow our customers is to gain real time and historical insights for power consumption and energy footprint for their data center operations. And this is not only for the networking equipment and not only for the Cisco equipment, but anything that is plugged in into the rack, they're gonna be able to get those insights into that. And we also back this up with the latest generation of Nexus portfolio products, such as Nexus 9800, that is now up to 60 times more energy efficient from the previous generation also. So we are bringing this level of sustainable networking to many different use cases, including, I mean, we talked about AI ML networking before also, but this has been, I mean, sustainability automation has been uh, an ingrained principle for us when we are driving uh, our portfolio and uh, coming up with new products within the data center team, right? Okay, um, awesome. And then so to, c to connect this across and kind of wrap up, you know, Mary, I, it seems to me that sustainability is, is a cross domain conversation, right? We think about it in the data center, we think about it in the context of the campus, you look at what we're doing uh, with the smart lighting and the POE in places like Atlanta, uh, our Pen One office in New York City. But I've got to imagine that there's also some design thinking or a design approach to how you drive that consistency across these domains. Like, how is how is your team thinking about broadly, you know, no, no, no roadmap requests, but broadly that sustainability challenge through design? Yeah, it's a huge, there's so much energy behind it. And I mean, it's a, a top topic coming out in, in our hackathons that we run internally. Um, but we, um, we're working across, across Cisco networking on um, thinking about sustainability consistently as well. And um, we have a team working across the org who have generated um, a set of design principles to help inspire our teams to to think consistently about it, um, you know we're 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 definitely looking at um, similar to some of the things that Yusuf has mentioned in the data center, looking at um, bringing out insights um, and more information about how we're doing. Um, what is our what does our energy consumption look like? Where could we maybe gain efficiencies? 
across our portfolio. So again, I won't flash any roadmaps here, um, not to be overly um, hand wavy, but I don't, I don't want to get in too much trouble. Um, but we are looking at, you know, um, we're, we're also looking at like Meraki sensors and the network closet as it relates to network management. How can we measure kind of temper, temperature and, and other things that can kind of feed into some of these statistics? So really, really, really important work um, that that is underway and will continue. That's also awesome. we're, we're making IT a better place. But we're making the world a better place. And of course, we can't share everything because we need some magic to share for the next time we all get together for a Cisco chat. But with that, I do want to wrap us all up here. So first of all, thank you, uh, Angelique, Mary, Yusuf, thank you for joining us today and shedding a little bit more light into the story behind the stories from Cisco Live. And certainly thanks to everyone who joined us for the hour, who submitted some tough questions, and thanks to everyone who helped get those answered behind the scenes. Uh, we're really looking forward to the next iteration of Cisco Chat with all of you. But until then, uh, stay secure out there, and I hope your networks are always predictable experiences. Thanks, y'all. Thank you.